Holden. It has two 16 feet uh, single access antennas. Are you taking now, Steve? We're not going to lay it up. Yeah. Turn around, bye. That teach is going to go. It better go. <laughs> Get our Christine going up, up, up. Yeah, I got it. Away we go. I got you, Daniel. The data processing engineer has reported the backup flight system is in sync with the primary system. January 28th. Uh, it's it's crazy. Crazy. Well, it's 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 Solid rocket booster separation. But it was really, it was far too early. 
and it's far too big an explosion. And it took a while, I'm sure, for it to sink in in the minds of, of the parents and the uh, school children. Here you see Mr. and Mrs. Corrigan still standing, saying a silent prayer. This is a Christian Keep McCall's parents. It's Edwin Grace Corrigan. Mrs. Corrigan had said in an earlier interview with CNN that she would be thrilled to be the one to be up there herself. But she wants to fly in Los Angeles just because she liked the adventure of it. They'd always encouraged their daughter to be adventurous and to go for it. In other words. Tom, the area that we were just watching, the bleachers where people were watching and photographing the launch, who was allowed in there? That is the VIP section, invited guests for this launch. I myself received an invitation from Michael Smith who was the pilot on this flight, to sit in these same bleachers and to watch his launch. Michael Smith has been a guest here on CNN before on our launch coverage and sent me a special invitation to go. That would then include family members of the astronauts? It, in, it includes family members. I understand there's a delegation from China of 100 people, school children from New Hampshire. Challenger's pilot, as Tom just said, was Mike Smith, 40 years old. He was a commander in the U.S. Navy. He's from Buford, North Carolina, a graduate of the U.S. Naval Academy. He served in Vietnam, is married, and has three children. And we had an interview with him here on CNN back in July. Let's play that one. Heather, as an initial reaction, what do you think went wrong? It's difficult to say, Alistair. I've looked at the pictures and I've seen the slowed down version as well. Um, it looks to me, initially, as if something went wrong with the shuttle itself. If you look at the pictures in slow motion, it looks as if the right-hand engine of the shuttle itself exploded. You could see a tongue of flame coming out of it. That is right over the liquid oxygen fuel tank, which which feeds the liquid oxygen from that enormous tank, the big brown tank that you see lifting off the shuttle, into the shuttle itself. So an explosion would have ignited the liquid oxygen, and that would have led to an, imme an immediate explosion of the whole assembly. And I think, as you saw, the whole of Challenger was just engulfed by flame. Um, nobody would have stood a chance. That central tank you were describing is, as I understand it, liquid fuel, and would that have explained the flash fire that we saw in those pictures? Yes, absolutely. Um, you probably saw at the same time, again, if you look at the a replay of the, uh, the film, the two solid fuel boosters, which give shuttles such a tremendous thrust on, on takeoff, they were actually ejected after that happened. The, the interesting point about it is that the, the explosion occurred at no specific state during the, the shuttle countdown. It wasn't when they should have ejected the solid fuel boosters. It happened one minute, 15 seconds into launch. And it's not clear what happened, except there does seem to have been a fault in the, the uh, shuttle, shuttle's own motors, its own engines. But again, I think we'll have to look at the videos again and see what wreckage is left. Uh, 
uh, probably a paramedic. Houston, uh, we are coordinating with recovery forces in the field. We're in safety uh, equipment. Uh, recovery vehicles uh, intended for the recovery ASRB in the general area. Tell us our flag, those parachutes are believed to be uh, paramedics going into that area. So we had uh, apparently normal answers with the data coming out to reflect like being normal. Roger, you can go into the time of uh, the one on and around right now. We've got to travel back up to here's on the way. We have a C-130 on the way out. Roger. About approximately a minute or so into the flight, uh, there was a, an apparent explosion. The uh, flight dynamics officer reported that tracking reported that the vehicle had exploded and then back to the water in an area approximately located at 28.64 degrees north, 80.28 degrees west. Recovery forces are proceeding to the area, including ships and a C-130 uh, aircraft. Controllers reviewing their data here in Mission Control. We will uh, provide you with more information as it becomes available. This is Mission Control, Houston.
any 